All right, so here we have the module two uh, lecture on logarithmic functions. Basically, we're extending from exponentials into logarithms. So what we need to discuss is what exactly is a logarithm? Well, logarithms are the natural extension of exponentials because exponentials present something a little complicated. Now, before, if we're solving equations, and I want to solve for a variable, I can always manipulate things. I can get, you know, I can add and subtract. I can multiply, divide. I can always undo anything that's been done. My problem comes with if I have y equals, you know, 2 to the x, and I want to solve for x. How do I get that exponent down out of the exponent? There's no inverse function to get, you know, rid of an exponential. Addition and subtraction are inverse functions of each other. Uh, you know, multiplication and division are inverse functions of each other. They always undo each other. So what undoes exponential? Well, that's where logarithms come in. The logarithm function is the inverse of the exponential function. So what we do is we're going to write, if we have a function, let's make it a little more general. We don't want to use an actual number in there. We'll say if y equals b to the x, where b is some base, it doesn't matter what the base is, we know that this is the definition of an exponential function. b is a positive number, x is a real number then I can rewrite this as the log base b of y equals x. Okay? This is y. So this defines a logarithmic function where our bases, the, the base of the log is always the base of the exponential and I bring the x down out and I just basically switch where, which side the X and the Y are on. Okay, So, these are equivalent statements. So if I have a statement that's written like this, I can rewrite it as a log. Excuse me. I can rewrite it as a logarithmic statement. Okay, So, for example, if I had, say, 8 equals 2 to the x. Okay? I could rewrite that as log base 2 okay, of 8 equals x. I just 2 is my base, still the base. X and Y switch places. So here the base and the X were together. Here the base and the Y are together. So does that make sense? We can also go the other way. If we have something written as a log, we can always rewrite it as an exponential. What if I had log base 3 of 9 equals x? Well, that's the same thing as saying the base 3 to the x power equals 9. Okay? So you always say base to this equals this. So we're going kind of in a loop. All right. So that is by definition exactly what a log is. So let's evaluate these and get actual answers for them. So if we're going to say you know, equals x, equals x, equals x. We always put a value there so that we can, you know, get a, 
uh, a nice equation. So to evaluate a log, we're always going to say 2 to what power equals 16? 2 to the x equals 16. Because remember, we're going kind of in a circle. 2 to the power equals 16. So 2 to what power equals 16? Well, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So that's 2 to the 4th power equals 16. Therefore, x equals 4. Okay? Over here, same deal. 7 to the x equals 1 over 49. So, 7 to what power equals 49? Well, I know 7 squared is 49, but I don't want it. I don't want 49. I want 1 over 49. So, what do I have to do to make a reciprocal? Remember, we talked about this a couple of, of lectures ago when we were doing exponentials. Do you remember how to make something into uh, a reciprocal when we're doing exponents? We make it negative, right? So, if 7 squared is 49, 7 to the negative 2 would be 1 over 49. So 7 to the negative 2 is 1 over 49, which means x is equal to negative 2. Here, same deal. 25 to the x equals 5. All right, so what exponent do I have to take 25 to to get 5? Well, since 5 is smaller than 25, I know that I'm looking for some root. Is it a square root? Is it a cube root? Well, 25 and 5 are related by that square root, right? 5 is the square root of 25. So how do I write square root as an exponent? Right, it's 1 half. 25 to the half is the same thing as the square root of 25, which is 5. Therefore, x is one half, right? We've got those being the same. Therefore, x equals one half. Okay? So that's how you're going to evaluate logs most of the time. You're going to rewrite them in a function in a way that lets you evaluate the exponential. Okay? So now we have a few properties of logs. The first property of logs are apply to just these are just general rules so log base b of b equals 1 what does this mean what if I've got log base 3 of 3 if the base is the same as whatever you're taking the log of then it's always 1 log base 7 of 7 is 1 log base 8 of 8 is 1 log base 743 of 743 is 1, okay? Log base b of 1 equals 0. This just means the log of 1 is 0 regardless of the base. So log 7 of 1 is what? 0. Log base 12 of 1, 0. Log base 743 of 1, that's the most hideous 1 of all time. So log base 743 of 1, 0. Okay? No matter what you're taking, no matter what base is, if you're taking the log of 1, it's always 0. Okay? Our other major properties of logs are here. More generally here, the log base b of b to some exponent is just the exponent. This is the inverse properties. This tells us that like addition and subtraction cancel each other out, exponents and logs cancel each other out effectively. Okay? So, if you have a log and you take the log base b of b to some exponent, all that's left is the exponent. The base and the log cancel each other out and all that's left is the exponent. Same deal with b2. If the log is the exponent, then the log and the base cancel each other out, and all that's left is the x. For example, log base 3 
of 3 to the x plus 7. The 3 and the log base 3 cancel each other out. All that's left is the x plus 7. If you've got log base, I don't know, log base 6 of 6 to the 5x minus 7. What's that going to give you? It's going to give you 5x minus 7 because the log 6 and the 6 cancel each other out. Okay? And then also, what if you've got 8 to the log base 8 of 3x plus 12. Well, the 8 and the log base 8 will cancel each other out. All that you've got left is the 3x plus 12. If you've got, you know, 17 to the log base 17 of 16x minus 3, then it's just 16x minus 3. Okay. Now, what does a log look like? A logarithm, not a log, but a logarithm. Well, let's graph it and see what it looks like. Y equals log, let's use base 2 of X. Okay, so we'll let X and Y. Now, remember, this is the same thing as uh, 2 to the y equals x. Right? Now, when we did exponentials, this was a little backwards, right? The y was our x, the x was our y. But notice that when we did our, our graphs of our uh, exponentials, our y value was never negative, right? When we did growth, it always looked like this. So we never had anything down here. When we had decay, it always looked like this, but it never fell down here into this range. That meant y was never uh, less than zero. Okay? Since these are inverse functions, this means that x's can't be less than zero for logs. Okay? Oops, I'm sorry. What that means is I can't take the negative value of a, uh, I can't take a log of a negative number. Why? Because, let me show you, 2 to the y equals x, right? Can I take 2 to some power and get a negative number. I'll let you think about that, can you? No matter what y is, 2 to some power, 2 to the fifth power. Is that positive? Absolutely, it's a positive number. 2 to the 0.5, still positive. Two, oops, 2 to the uh, zero zero 0.001, still a positive number, okay? Well, what if I use a negative number? 2 to the 0.25 negative, it's still a positive number, it's just a decimal now, okay? 
this tells us that I can never take 2 to some power and get a negative. Therefore, I can't put a, a negative value in for x because it's not going to give me anything. I can't take the log of a negative number. Okay? So, straight away I know these all have to be, uh, and I can't even do 0 because I can't take 2 to some power and get 0. So I can't even use 0. I have to use, I could use something really close to 0, right? I could use, you know, I don't know what. What do you want to use? For this, let's actually, since I can't plug the log into, uh, into my calculator, let's just use the exponential to get our values. Let's do y equals negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Right? We know these values already. 2 to the negative 3 is 1 eighth. You got 1 fourth, 1 half, 1, 2, 4, and 8. These are the same numbers that we did before. You know, 2 to the negative 3 is 1 over 2 cubed, which is 1 over 8. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared which is 1 over 4. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 over 2 to the first, which is just 1 half. And anything to the 0 power uh, still is just 1. And then, of course, 2 to the first is just 2. 2 squared is 4. And 2 cubed is 8. Okay? So, if we use, instead of using the log, which is not something I can plug into my calculator, I rewrote it as an exponential, 2 to the y equals x, and then plugged in values of y. So now, if x is 1 eighth, now remember, th these are ordered pairs, right? So, I've got 1 eighth and negative 3. I've got one fourth and negative two. I got one half and negative one. I've got one and zero. I've got two and one. I've got four and two. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and three. So this one. It looks like an exponential kind of flipped on its side. Now, if you were to graph y equals 2 to the x, you would get this graph, which... mirrors that which is what inverse functions do they always mirror each other across that line y equals x okay so it makes sense that it would look like that now what's important to know is when graphing log functions there are some really important points to recognize it will always cross at the point 1, 0. And wherever, let me change this color, wherever it hits at y equals 1, that x value will be your base. So since y equals 1, I can trace the graph over here. 
This is where the graph is. I fall down. This is at x equals 2. Therefore, I know that my base is 2. Okay? Now, if I had a different graph that say, hold on, let's add a, let's look at, say I had one that crossed It did like this. Well, it crosses it one zero, but then I can trace and say, where does it cross y equals one? Well, it crosses at one, two, three, four. Therefore, this is the graph of y equals log base four of x. Okay, you see the difference? This one crosses at 4, whereas this one crossed at 2. It got taller much quicker than this one. This one will stay really thin, basically. Okay? So that's how you tell what your graph is actually. If you're just looking at a graph, that's how to tell the graph. Okay? Now I want to talk about common and natural logs. All of the logs that we've done so far had bases. Sometimes you'll come across some that don't have bases. Like you just see log of 27. So what does that mean? Well, if you just have a log, that's what's called the common log. Uh, and most people have a calculator that has just a log button on their calculator. Uh, where's the lo log? See, we have log on the calculator. What that means is it is the common log. It's log base 10. We live in a base 10 society. We have 10 digits, 10 fingers, 10 toes. That's why we count to 10. That's why we have uh, base 10. Everything is in, you know, uh, tens, hundreds, thousands. Everything is base 10. So that's why it's called the common log. That's what we deal with more often than not. So if you don't see a number with log, you assume that it has base 10. Natural log is what happens with ln. That's this right here, ln. Uh, if you're wondering why it's ln instead of nl, it's because it's logarithm natural. It's French. Uh, and they always have things backwards in France. So logarithm, natural log of x, is the same thing as log base e, okay? Because remember, e is the natural exponent. So if you see ln, that's all it means. It's log base e, all right? So we want to talk about a few log rules that we have. The first is the product rule. Uh, when I'm doing these rules, I'm going to write them in base, uh, in natural log, uh, you can do it in common log. You can do it in any base. They always work in any base. Uh, but I'm going to write them in natural log. So our common product rules are ln of two numbers multiplied together, m times n, is the same thing as natural log of m plus natural log of n. Okay? For example, the natural log of... Uh, 2 times 8 is just the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of 8. All right? You can just split them up. If things are being multiplied, you can change them into the addition, as long as it's just multiplication. Okay? You can also go backwards. Okay? This product rule works backwards. If you start with two things being added together, natural log of 3 plus natural log of uh, 10. Then I can just, since this is two things being added together that are the same based log, 
then I can just say this is natural log of 3 times 10, which is natural log of 30. So you can go either way, depending on which way you need to go. Okay? And this only works if there's no coefficient in front of the log and the logs are the same base. Okay? Quotient rule. The natural log of m divided by n, if multiplication is addition, division is subtraction. For example, the natural log of uh, x divided by y is just the natural log of x minus the natural log of y. And of course we can go backwards. What is the natural log of uh, 20 minus the natural log of 2? Well, since it's natural log, no coefficients, it's just natural log of 20 divided by 2, which is the natural log of 10. Okay, so you can go either way with these. The power rule is one of the more uh, powerful rules, actually. It's got power in it, but it's one of the more powerful rules that we have. What it says is, if you've got the natural log of m to some power p, then I can take that exponent and pull it out front as p natural log of m. Okay? For example, if I've got natural log of x cubed, I can take that 3, pull it out front, and make it 3 natural log of x. Okay? I can also go backwards from this. What if I've got 6 natural log of 5? Well, that's the same thing as natural log of 5 to the 6th power, which 5 to the 6th power, 15, 6, 25. Okay? So, power rule is really important because sometimes you might have say 2 to the x plus 5 natural log. I can rewrite that as x plus 5 times natural log of 2. And I've gotten that variable down out of the exponent, which is what I ultimately always want to do is to get those variables <coughs> excuse me, out of the exponents. Okay? So, let's try out all those rules. We want to expand the following as much as possible. So I've got log base 5 of 7 times 3. Well, this is going to be product rule, right? Log base 5 of 7 plus log base 5 of 3. Because it's product rule, we just change it to addition. And they both stay log base 5 because it's always the same. This is division, so it's quotient rule. Log base 9 of 9 minus log base 9 of x. What is log base 9 of 9? Remember, this goes back to the very beginning, right? Where is it? Here we go. Log base 3 of 3 is 1. Log base 7 of 7 is 1. Log base 8 of 8 is 1. Right? So what is log base 9 of 9? It's just 1 minus log base 9 of x. Always simplify as far as you possibly can. All right, so here we've got another quotient. Log base 8 of 64 minus uh, log base 8 of square root of x plus 1. Now we want to simplify this, right? Because 64 can be written as... 8 squared, right? So this goes back to the log base 8, and the 8 will cancel each other out, just leaving the exponent of 2, right? Here, I can rewrite this as log base 8 of x plus 1 to the 1 half power, right? Any square root can be written as a 1 half power. 
and then I can use my power rule to bring the one half out front. So minus one half log base eight of x plus one. All right, and then lastly, we've got this. This is product rule, so log base b of x squared plus log base b of y, but this has got an exponent that I can bring out front, so 2 log base b of x plus log base b of y. And that'll be the final answer on that one. Now let's go the other way. Let's condense all of these to the best of our ability. So the first is two common logs being added together. So remember addition we can change to multiplication using the product rule. So this is just log of 5 times 2 which is log of 10. But remember log, common log is the same as log base 10. And what's the log base 10 of 10? It's just 1. Okay. Here we've got subtraction, so that's going to be the quotient rule. So that's the log, common log, of 3x plus 7 divided by x. Alright. Here we've got subtraction. Can we do quotient rule on it? We can't straight away. Because remember, the, co the coefficient has to be uh, 1 in front of each one of the logs. So I'm going to have to use the power rule to put those up on top of those as exponents. So that's going to become natural log of x to the 7 minus natural log of y cubed. Now, since they both have that coefficient of 1, I can use the quotient rule. So that's natural log of x to the 7 divided by y cubed. And then lastly, we have three terms. We have to do the same thing. We have to get those exponents up on there where they go. So this is natural log of x cubed plus natural log of y to the 5th minus natural log of z to the 6th. So this has got addition and subtraction. So this is going to use product and quotient rules. So when you've got product and quotient rule, that just means you're going to have a fraction and anything that's being added is going to be on the top with multiplication and anything that's subtracted is going to be on the bottom with division. Okay, so the x cubed and the y to the fifth are being added, so they're going to be on the top. So you've got x cubed, y to the fifth, the z to the 6 is the only thing being subtracted, so it's the only thing on the bottom. And that'll be your final answer. All right. If you have any questions on this, you can give me an email at professormkellum at gmail.com or send me a tweet at Professor Kellum on Twitter.